This is KGW News at Noon. We start this afternoon with breaking news. The Clark County deputies who shot and killed a man during a drug sting last year will not face charges. The Pierce County prosecuting attorney just made that ruling today. Kevin Peterson Jr. was shot in the parking lot of a U.S. bank in Hazeldell. Again, this shooting happened last year during a drug investigation. The prosecuting attorney says Peterson pointed a gun at officers as he tried to run away, and that's the reason this shooting is considered justified. Earlier this year, Peterson's family said they plan to sue over his death. And in a statement today, here it is, the family said, we are shocked an officer gets to shoot Kevin in the back because he's talking about the officer tired of chasing him. And now they went on to say the two officers who shot at Kevin while he was running are both back at work. The statement also says this is unfair and unsafe for everyone in the community. Our other top story this afternoon is the ongoing chaos in Afghanistan as Americans there try to get out of the country at the airport uh, at the airport that is in Afghanistan's capital city of Kabul. Afghans who are also trying to escape rushed the tarmac. These are incredible pictures from earlier today. They rushed the tarmac and held on to American planes literally as they were taking off. U.S. officials say at least seven people died. They're trying to get away from the Taliban, which has taken over nearly every single government building in Kabul. In about 45 minutes, we're expecting to hear from President Joe Biden. Ahead of that, here's NBC's Richard Engel. Afghans are thronging to Kabul's airport, desperate to get on planes and leave the country at any cost. They're scaling the airport's walls this morning, rushing in. There's no screening, no security checks, just force of numbers. It's all happening just a few hundred yards from the military side of Kabul airport, where the U.S. is staging an elaborate evacuation of American diplomats from the embassy. The militants took control of Kabul yesterday. Now the Taliban are out in full force. They took over the presidential palace, occupied Kabul's version of the Oval Office. Afghanistan's president fled the country. The Taliban have set up checkpoints across the Afghan capital. The Taliban don't just control Kabul, but the whole country and all the weapons the U.S. bought for the Afghan army. The militants are much stronger now than 20 years ago when the U.S. drove them from power when they sheltered Osama bin Laden as he plotted 9-11. Now the Taliban are back as the U.S. leaves Afghanistan, gripped by panic and run by extremists. The Taliban have been taking pot shots at the American planes as they leave and many are drawing comparisons to what's happening here today to the American withdrawal from Saigon. Richard Engel, NBC News, Kabul. Again, President Biden is scheduled to address the U.S. here in the next 45 minutes, but the president is already facing scrutiny for comments he made a month ago about the situation in Afghanistan. Is a Taliban takeover of Afghanistan now inevitable? No, it is not because you have the Afghan troops have 300,000 well-equipped, as well-equipped as any army in the world, and an air force against something like 75,000 Taliban. It is not inevitable. When the president speaks again later this hour, we will bring it to you live. NBC will have a special report that will carry here on TV, and we'll also stream it on KGW.com and on the KGW YouTube channel. We do have an update on one local story here before we check in on today's weather forecast. The bootleg fire in Southern Oregon is now 100% contained. What was earlier this summer the largest wildfire in the country burned more than 413,000 acres over the course of nearly 40 days. The Oregon Department of Forestry thanked the hundreds of firefighters who worked around the clock for weeks to bring that fire under control. All right, Chris McGinnis, I know we also have some good news this afternoon when it comes to wildfire smoke in the area, not to mention things are definitely cooler outside today. It's a lot cooler and the air a lot more clear, right? A lot of that particulate matter, the smoke is gone from the Western Valleys. Here's a look at the current air quality here up and down the I-5 corridor. Green dots, meaning good air quality here across Western Oregon. We still have some pockets, though where the air is not so good. Marginal air quality right now across central Oregon and south central Oregon still dealing with 
hazardous air quality downwind of several fires, including those that are burning in Northern California. But let me show you the visible satellite here over the last few hours. We'll go out a little wider. Uh, there is the bullfire in Southern Clackamas, Northern Marion County, right on the southern edge of the Mount Hood National Forest. The wind direction today driving that smoke up and over the Cascades to the east. Same story down towards the uh, middle fort complex down the east of the Eugene area. Again, wildfire smoke there being pushed over to central Oregon. That's unfortunate for folks in that part of the state. You've got one more day to deal with of uh, not very good air quality and then things should start to improve for you at the beach right now. It's a little cloudy inland. It's bright and sunny, but it's a whole lot cooler than we were last week during the lunchtime hour. 74 here in Portland. We'll probably tack on another 10 before we're done. I've got your full forecast coming up in just a few minutes. True. All right, we'll hear from Chris again in just a few minutes here, but we do want to get back to some of our top local news headlines today. We know last week that the FDA approved a third COVID shot for some people with vulnerable immune systems, but so far those shots have been hard to come by in Oregon. Tim Gordon tells us why. One thing we don't have is a shortage of vaccine, so you'd think it would be no problem to get third shots to those who qualify. People like Cheryl Schock of Oregon City. My first diagnosis of the chronic form was in 2019. Cheryl has non-Hodgkin's lymphoma. She takes an immunotherapy drug that also hurts COVID vaccine response. A third shot is a chance for at least a little protection, but visits to Oregon pharmacies have not paid off. It's frustrating. I mean, I get it. It's the weekend. Uh, and as we've seen in this pandemic, there's so much unfolding. The federal recommendation came out Thursday, but as of Sunday, the Oregon Health Authority had not updated its approved guidance to include third shots for the immune compromised. So providers are not giving them for the most part. Woohoo! Team Moderna. Third shot was the charm, as well as it took me three places to go. Jennifer Taft is an exception to the rule. She posted on Twitter after she got a third dose at a Portland area Walgreens. But everyone else we've talked to has been turned down. Meanwhile, in Washington, third shots are on. Saturday, the state's Department of Health wrote, health care providers can now offer third doses of Pfizer and Moderna COVID-19 vaccines to certain immunocompromised individuals. Again, Oregon has made no such statement. It's frustrating. Maybe it's partly because they didn't know what the ruling would actually be when it came down. But yeah, it just says to me, we're not prepared for stuff. On Sunday, OHA was not prepared to say when approved guidance would be released so that some of the most at risk can get a third shot. Now, one Oregon pharmacist I spoke with recommended crossing the border to get the vaccine. And that's exactly what Cheryl Schock ended up doing Sunday afternoon. She sent me a great picture with her smile and a fresh Band-Aid on her arm. She traveled up to Clark County to get that third dose. And we'll see if Oregon Health Authority has anything else to tell us about this today. Guys, back to you in the studio. All right, we have one other piece of COVID news to get to this afternoon. Legacy Health is limiting the number of visitors at their facilities. Legacy says a growing number of staff and patients have been exposed to COVID since the rapid rise of the Delta variant began. So patients can no longer bring a visitor with them unless it's considered an emergency. There are a few other exceptions as well, but people need to contact Legacy ahead of time to make arrangements.